All right, welcome back. Um, this is another example for the double integration method. Here we have a cantilevered beam, um, A, B, and it's fixed here at A, and the length is L, and there's a point load acting at the very, very tip of this beam here at B. And we want to figure out the equations for the slope or the rotation at any point along the span, and we also want to figure out an equation for deflection. And remember, our double integration um, method formula is d squared y over dx squared, or the double integral is equal to, or the second derivative, I'm sorry, is equal to m over ei. And your m over here, remember, is your internal moment equation, right? internal moment equation along this span and this span only. Okay, so the first thing we'd want to do is figure out the reactions here at A. Um, we could figure out what the reactions here at A are um, and cut the beam somewhere at a, at a length x and look at the left side or we can just cut it right away not have to worry about the reactions at A and only look at the right side of the span. So let's actually do that. So if I cut this beam, let's say somewhere over here, you know that, and I'm going to look at the right side of this beam, so let me draw the right side, the right side's going to look something like this, right, and then you have your point load P here, and then you have your cut, that I cut over here, and then you have um, I'm going to apply a moment this way, we'll call that M, and we need this distance right here. This distance is going to be a little bit tricky because in the previous example we just called it X. Here, if we set our origin or our coordinate origin here at A, and I call this Y and X, that's our coordinate system, that means the equation I'm writing is based off this origin right here. So that means if I cut this beam and I looked at the left side, all of this distance would be x. So that means this distance, all of this distance right here, all of this distance, if we're looking at the right side, would be, well, if all of this is x, then that means this is l minus x, right? This is l minus x gives you this little piece right here. So I'm going to call this l minus x, okay? So let's figure out what the moment equation here is. If I took the sum of the moments about any point, I'll call this point O, and I said, mm, we can do clockwise is positive. I'll have this clockwise moment here, and then I have, I'll have this moment caused by P, which is also positive, so P times L minus X, right? Force times distance, and so, this is equal to zero, and if I solved for m, I'd get negative p l minus x. Okay, so this is our very sacred moment equation for um, use in this equation, right? This is our internal moment along any point um, for this whole span, and, and we looked at the right side. Um, it really doesn't matter which side you look at. Um, they'll both end up with the same final two equations for slope and deflection. So we figured out the moment equation. Let's plug this M um, into our uh, double integration formula. So down here I'm going to write dy or d squared y dx squared is equal to M. And M is negative P L minus X. Uh, divided by EI, but I can move that EI to the other side and I'll have something like that. Right? So remember, if we integrate this formula one time, we'll have an equation for the slope. So let's do that. Let's integrate both of these, uh, both of these, and there should be a dx here, right? Uh, so here we'll get EI dy dx is equal to, well here we can actually uh, factor out this p because the p is constant so I'm going to write a negative p here times the integral of l minus x dx. Okay, 
So let me scroll down a little bit. Right there, that's good. Um, again, the, the left side stays the same. dy dx is equal to negative p times the integral of l minus x. And this we can actually integrate separately, the l and the minus x. So l becomes, l is a constant, so the integral of l is going to be lx and then minus the integral of x, which is x squared over 2. All right? Then, since I integrated, I have to add this constant, c1. Now, this is um, equation... Well, let me simplify this down a little bit more, since I have it simplified in my notes. ei uh, dy dx is equal to, I can plug this p back in, so it's negative plx uh, plus px squared over 2 uh, plus constant 1. So this is equation 1. This is our equation for slope. Now if we integrated this equation, uh, we can actually figure out what our deflection equation is. So let's do that. So let's integrate both sides again. Actually, let me not write it there. Let me just say, let's integrate equation 1. Okay. So if we integrated this, um, on the left side, you'd have ei times y is equal to the integral of all three of these terms, negative plx dx plus the integral of px squared over 2 dx plus the integral of this constant 1 dx, right? So ei y, the integral of plx is, well, p negative pl is a constant, so we can just integrate the x, and that'd be x squared over 2, so I'd end up with negative p l x squared over 2, plus the integral of x squared, because uh, I can actually factor out this p over 2, so I'd get p over 2, and then the integral of x squared would be x cubed over 3, right? plus the integral of this constant is c1 times x. And since I integrated um, a second time, I have to add a second constant. All right, so let's simplify this down a bit. ei is equal to negative plx squared over 2 plus px cubed over 6 uh, plus uh, c1 times x plus c2, okay? This is equation two. This is our equation for deflection. Um, I'll stop it here. In the next video, we'll apply some boundary conditions to figure out what C1 and C2 are. All right? So see you then.